you made your house a reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Nothing to do this week? Don't miss another event. Go to blacksinsanantonio.com for our event calendar. The home of the largest business directory in San Antonio with an African American focus. Sign up today for our weekly e-blast and text message alerts. Help us make this a better community. Connect. Empower. Grow. Please join me as I host this year's Black Worship Clergy Hall of Fame Dinner. Monday, February 18th at the Antioch Sports Complex. Come experience an evening of fun, fellowship, and food as we induct Pastor Robert P. Forte Sr., pastor of the Mount Gilead Baptist Church, and Pastor and Ray D. Brown. Pastor of the Resurrection Baptist Church. I look forward to seeing you there. Pastor Kevin Pastor Nelson, Kevin Nelson. Be, blessed. be blessed. Because it matters to you, it matters to us. It is Black Video News with your host, Keith Scott. Black Friday Live. San Antonio. Here we go. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Black Friday Live. I'm your host, Keith Scott. You know where we're coming with hot topics and subject matter in the new year, always with a special guest. Joining us today, right here on Black Friday Live, this gentleman just jumped into this seat right here in District 2. Cruz resigned, so we got our new councilman right here on the east side of San Antonio, Councilman Art Hall. How we doing, I'm good, Art? I'm good. Good to see all, you again. All, always a pleasure to see yes, you, sir. sir. How's Glad everything be... going, man? Great. Just been busy. Um, we get, came on board about two weeks ago, and so it's been nonstop ever since. Two weeks ago, and just kind of rewind the clock a little bit, let our viewers know, for those that don't know what took place right here in District 2 with Cruz stepping down. Yeah, so Cruz, a good friend of, of mine and ours, and he became an associate judge. And so he wanted to, to dedicate himself back to the community in a different way, focusing on juveniles. And so when he came off, that opened up that seat. And right. so the, uh, the appointee had to be appointed by the mayor and city council. Correct. So I applied for the position and was, was voted in. Yeah, and there were a lot of people that threw their hat in the ring. It kind of was like eight people, then it was narrowed down to three. Right. And so I became one of the three and right. so some great folks. So Audrey Lewis is one of those, uh, Jada, um, uh, I can't think of her last name offhand, but she was one of those as yeah, well. I know you're some, some great candidates. Right. And, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I think what they looked at from me is my experience in district eight, uh, from 2003 to 2007. Yeah. And so let's go that. So and, councilman and district three and district. Well, I was in district eight previously, Correct. but now, uh, now right. district two. Right. So previously eight as a councilman. Right has some history, has some knowledge as a councilman right here in San Antonio, Texas. What's going on, Art? You, you, you know, it's a short period of time for my viewers, Art's in the seat for just a short, brief time. But, you know, what can you achieve in such, and, and we had this conversation on MLK Day. Right. Well, here we are with a different audience on a different platform with Black Friday Live. 
what can you accomplish in such a short period of time? Right. So we're, we're quick. So that's Jada Sullivan. So just want yeah, to Jada make sure Sullivan. that we, okay. we give a shout out to her. Okay. So in the four or five months, what I really wanted to make sure is, is that District 2 had good, strong representation for these four or five months. Typically, when you're in office for two years, uh, you've got that, that history, that background, uh, that con con continuation that, that happens. But if, we're, if we put somebody in there that doesn't have the experience, you're going to lose that, uh, that continuity. So that's what I wanted to bring. I wanted to make sure that District 2 had good, strong rep representation until we have the election in May. Okay, so, so let's, let's, go, let's go into <laughs> an educational moment real quick when we talk about a councilman. A lot of people may not know what a councilman's position and, and what his objective is as a councilman in the city. Tell us a little bit about what a councilman's role is in the district. So we are we deal with all the city issues. So we have the city level, the county level, the state level, the national level. So it's everything that deals with the city. So all the basic stuff, streets, drainage, that kind of thing. Affordable housing is a big issue right now. Um, the scooter issue is, is is coming up in the next Correct. couple of weeks. So, okay. so that's big. So it's a fire police. Right. Uh, we've had the issue with the fire fighters and, uh, and the negotiations with the union contract. So those are all issues that the city council members and city council takes on. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to go right into it, uh, you know, councilman, because District 2, for those that don't know, we're right here on the east side of San Antonio when we talk about District 2. District 2 seems to get left out a lot with a lot of different issues, being left out at the table with a lot of different opportunities. What does District 2 need, man, a councilman representation-wise? Because, I mean, you got a short period. Oh, absolutely. Right absolutely. So. District two number one needs great leadership, and so we've got uh, we've we've had some great leadership as, uh, on different levels. We have great leadership in in uh, Barbara Gervin Hawkins uh, at the state level and Tommy Calvert on the county level, and so I wanted to make sure that we had that in in on the city level. Um, so part of that is is just making sure you have good, effective leadership that that others on council respect. Uh, one of the council members during the time of voting me in said, "I'm the fifth person in five years to to serve in that spot." You are. That's right. And so mm -hmm. that's that's constant turnover in the last five years. And with that constant turnover, you have you lose that longevity, you lose that continuity. Uh, but at the same time, you lose the the opportunity to be a leader on different issues throughout the city, um, which give you respect and a basis to to advocate for other issues, particularly for District two uh, going forward. Yeah. So um, how, how long can a councilman hold that seat if he's elected? So now when, when I was there, it was two two year terms so four years. So okay. now it's it's four two year terms. So eight years. OK, so eight mm -hmm. years. There's been a lot of inconsistency, like you said, with right. a lot of different people. Alan Ward. There were a lot of different councilmen. Right. Here we are. Cruz is, you know, a judge now. Right. Nothing wrong with growth. You can't stop growth. Right. But man, what is this district? We got a lot of issues in this district, Art, and we could probably talk about this for a long time, which we don't have. But you know, we got a lot of seniors. Yep. We got some crime right. that needs to be, you know, uh, addressed. Right. So, in the way I like to put it is, you know, District Two residents, we want everything else that every other uh, individual wants, every other community wants. We want safe streets. We want great schools. We want a, a great living environment. And so it's just a matter of being able to be, be an advocate for your issues on uh, in your district um, and then be a leader on other issues. And so, you know, right now, the big conversations that I want to make sure that we continue is affordable housing. Uh, we, we want to make sure that our, our, our streets continue to be safe. I'll mention there that that, you know, too often, I think District 2 gets plagued with uh, with some inconsistent information. So okay. while we have some crime, um, most of the crime actually does not happen on the, on the, east, on side. the, east, side. On the east side. So yeah. uh, a lot of the, 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 the most of the crime happens on the north side. And I think there's a west side substation that that outranks uh, the east side. Um, so those sorts of information, we got to make sure that we get out to the public. Uh, we want to attract business here. We want to attract jobs here. We want to attract good housing here. Make sure our, our street we're, we're an older um, environment so yeah, we community we, is it, so we got older streets that yeah. need need repairs right. so our issues are different from other sides of town but uh, it's a matter of making sure that you, you have a good uh, council member or leader um, playing that role to advocate for the district yeah so you know you got a few more months to do this you're gonna you know kind of leave out of this seat and then there are a lot of different people we're hearing a lot of different names and right. for people that want to be in this you know in this race Man, how can you, you know, just be an advocate, too, for that person that, you know, may end up in the seat or right. well you know, to keep this momentum? Because, like I said, it's a short period of time, but you can make right. a quick impact. Yes. Uh, so I carry. So my first day on the job, we were um, selecting city manager candidates. 
narrowing that down to one on, on the on three days later, and then um, and then had zoning cases uh, on that Thursday. So four days into the job, you're a city manager candidate. You're doing zoning, and then we selected a city manager just this past uh, this past week. So that kind of rapidity in information and making decisions is, is has to happen very quickly. Right. But for me, um, number one, I wanted to make sure we had a level playing field for those running in May. And what I've committed to is that every candidate, uh, I will offer them an opportunity to spend a full day with me. Um, I'll mentor them. I'll grab, the, grab lunch with them. I'll show them what kinds of things I look for uh, in, in serving uh, in a leadership role. Hopefully that meeting with each of those candidates will be on a Thursday so I can okay. walk them through a city council meeting. So at least you have a little bit of mentorship. And that's one thing I lacked when I came on is, is mentorship um, when I first ran for city council. Uh, not had a lot of that on the east side since, uh, since I've been here as well. So I'd like to be able to be part of that group that, that, that mentors the next generation of, of uh, leadership for District 2. Yeah. Well, quickly, brief too, we got a new district attorney yeah. here in San Antonio right, right. and a new city manager. Right. How do we need to stay on top of these guys to make sure? Because, you know, we had a city manager that really wasn't, you know, in the community. Right. We didn't see her a lot. Right. We heard about her, you know, on the news and things that she was doing in the city. Right. And uh, so what do these guys need to do to really make their approach and make sure that they're making an impact in the city of San Antonio? Well, so it's a, it's a lot about relationship building. So I know the, the new district attorney, I, I know Judge Wolf on, on, on the county side. I, I've known Eric Walsh, who, who's the new city manager. For, I've known him for years. So a lot of it's just relationship building with the council member and, and those other individuals, those other leaders that are out there. And then pulling them into the community. So I'm going to have a community meeting next uh, next Thursday. So okay. Eric Walsh is going to be a speaker there. Right. So those sorts of, of connections are, are critical. Um, but at the same time, you know, I kind of understand the city manager's role. Their role is to implement what council uh, dictates. And so uh, and Eric Walsh, during his application, made that very clear. So okay. then our job is to make sure that we advocate, right. uh, advocate to the city manager, to the other council members, so that you give clear direction for district as well as city needs uh, to the city manager. But Eric's, Eric's a great guy. Um, uh, he's a hard worker. He, he's, he'll get things done. And so uh, right now I'm just kind of pulling him into the community so that, that we get to meet him. Uh, he understands some of what our issues are. Okay. So that when, when he goes back and makes those decisions and implements, that he's got perspective. Well, maybe we can pull him over this way and get him on BBN where we can have a conversation Absolutely. with him. Yes, and I'm sure he'd be happy to do that. Well, Art, thanks for taking the time out to stop by and talk to us right here on Black Friday Live. Our District 2 Councilman, he's got a quick impact he's got to make, man. So we're going to be, you know, we're gonna be, you know your, your cheerleader. We're going to have the pom-poms going. Thanks for stopping by, Art Har, our Councilman right here in District 2, right here on the east side of San Antonio, Texas. I'm your host, Keith Scott. We'll see you next time right here on Black Friday Live. As always, be encouraged, folks.